story you're about to hear is true. It's true. It's true. And AFC Wimbledon are champions of the FA Cup. New reports suggest that Wimbledon's owners are looking to relocate the club. This could be the end. But now, Wimbledon's journey starts again. Can they make it back to the Premier League? 48 games, two hours of football today, and Wimbledon are down to one penalty kick to take them into the football league. After years of injustice, Wimbledon are finally back on the road to glory. But trust me, this story is far from done. Can they win this now? Yes, they can, you see! Hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for me to bring you a brand new series here on this channel. Welcome to the AFC Wimbledon Road to Glory. This is the genesis, this is the beginning of the new series and a massive journey. I'm really looking forward to it, I'm really looking forward to the journey because the storyline behind this team is so, so cool. I'm hoping you're looking forward to this series. It's the first Road to Glory I've done since FIFA 16. If you're new to the channel and you wanna see more career mode content, then of course make sure to subscribe to the channel. You new Wimbledon fans who might be watching the series because I'm representing your team, feel free to stick around because I'm going to be doing you justice in this series. If you are new to the channel, I do make quite obscure signings and quite realistic ones, so if you're concerned that I'm going to go out and buy um, Angel Gomez straight away, it's not going to happen, okay? Story time. Obviously, you've seen the intro. I hope you've enjoyed uh, that. It took a while to put together. Massive shout out to Jared HD, Cutsy Gaming, and also Guardy Thief whose vocals appeared at various points during the intro. You can go and check them out down in the description below. All three of them are fantastic YouTubers and I would definitely suggest going and taking a look at their channels. So obviously they help to portray the story really of AFC Wimbledon, but if you're still a little bit confused and you don't really know, in essence they were a team until 2003. AFC Wimbledon as an entity um, existed until 2003. They were taken over by a guy called Peter Winkleman and they were moved from their home in South London or in the district of Wimbledon to Milton Keynes because they ran out of money they went into administration and were moved for financial purposes away from their ground share at the time which was Selhurst Park which is where Crystal Palace play right now but obviously when that happened when Wimbledon went into administration they dropped through the tiers they did restart again as MK Dons so MK Dons are what the original Wimbledon FC were. Fans then recreated a new team, a Phoenix team called AFC Wimbledon, the club that we're going to be using in this save. And they went all the way from the very bottom of English football and now they're in League One. You might have noticed as well, the stadium is going to be called Plough Lane. That's where the old original uh, Wimbledon used to play before they moved to Milton Keynes. So we've gone back to the spiritual home of Wimbledon. We're going to just jump straight into proceedings. Okay, I've given you the backstory. Now it's actually time for the action. Okay, and we're going to start off by choosing a preseason trophy. Now, realistically, with the prize money being so tight here, we're just going to have to go for the easiest one, and that's this one here in the middle, uh, which is based in Denmark. So, as I mentioned, this is a League One side, third tier of English football, so we're going to have to promote it twice in order to make it to the Premier League, and then obviously. Our end goal is to win the Premier League, get into the Champions League, win the Champions League. I'm going to introduce you though to the current Wimbledon team. Just after we look at the objectives, you can see there that the general ones, youth development is quite low, but we will be using Youth Academies quite a lot in this series naturally. 
run exposure there, very low. You can see the actual specific uh, sort of objectives on the screen there. No objectives, obviously, for continental success. Domestic success, we are being asked to finish mid-table. This team is very weak to say it's League 1 because they've just been promoted from League 2. So we are going to have to build on it quite substantially even to finish mid-table. Though, of course, I would love to get promoted in the first season. And then financially, we need to finish the season with £2.6 million unspent. Not going to happen. Not going to lie. And that's a high priority as well, which concerns me. But to really do well in this series, in this season, we're going to have to spend some money. So here is the budget uh, as well. Just talk money. So here is the actual budget. £2.3 million pounds as a transfer budget is not bad at all for a League One side. And just under 10k in wages as well. So I need to of course introduce you to this Wimbledon team. We need to get some characters. We need to understand the players in this side so we can really grow to love them as this series progresses. Uh, George Long is our goalkeeper. 66 rated uh, but he's unfortunately on loan so he'll be with us for this season. Uh, not sure about in the future though. Uh, we've got Adedeji Oshilaja. He's clearly Nigerian. That's a Nigerian name. Adedeji's a very Nigerian name. But um, yeah, he, he's cool. I really like him because, you know, the, the linkage there and heritage. Uh, he's one of our centre-backs along with this guy, Charles, and also Barry Fuller, who is the club captain. This is a very interesting formation. Three at the back. This can only go badly. Uh, Harry Fo Forrester here, sorry, on the right-hand side is our best player ratings-wise. Uh, 67 rated. Uh, Saws and Abdu in the centre. We've also got Andy Barcham here on the left hand side. He's 64 rated. And uh, Trotter playing as an attacking mid, I believe. Though he's actually a centre mid. Uh, he's 66 rated. Uh, then Lyle Taylor, who I think will be the probably the poster boy of this series in terms of goal scoring. And also Cody McDonald up front with him. On the bench, uh, some more decent players actually. Striker wise, the depth is pretty good actually. Quezzi Apaya there from Ghana, striker. Piggott as well, another striker. George Frankham uh, there, right mid, 64 rated. Interestingly enough, look at his versatility. Can play as a right mid, right back, left back, and centre mid. So he's going to be definitely staying. I love a versatile player. Uh, Dean Parrott there, 64 rated centre mid. McDonnell, Nightingale, and Meads on the uh, on on the bench. We're gonna. I, I really want to call this guy Florence. I'm not gonna lie. I, I might. It might happen. Robinson, Kennedy, Hartigan, Kaija, and the rest. Callum Bay and and a couple of other guys that are sort of depth players slash younger players in this side that will improve. We'll get to learn these guys a little bit more as the series progresses, as we play more games with them. We'll sort of get to learn the characters, who's the good guys, who are the bad guys, who are the underperformers, who are the really high performers, and who are just the general fan favourites. By the way, if there are any players that you think I should bring in for this series, then make sure to drop them down in the comment section below. I love to hear what you guys think I should do. Transfer-wise, you always come up with some banging ideas for players to bring in and sign and whatnot so make sure to leave them down below now because we've got quite a lot of surplus funds at the moment i'm not going to put anyone up for sale just yet because we can probably do a couple of transfers in this episode without having to sell anybody first but one thing i always try and do is avoid selling players who are actually mean quite a lot to the club so I, I you know i'm not a wimbledon fan i don't know wimbledon side very well but if there are any players that have been around say since the conference south days and all Wimbledon fans absolutely adore that player then please let me know down in the comment section so I can avoid selling them pretty much any position I'm not gonna lie to you what is that hair anyway look we can't be getting distracted by that guy's haircut it's time to play the first preseason uh, game of this series the first game overall uh, it's against Odense Odense uh, from the Danish league. Now, if we get to the final of this competition, I will play it, but I'm sorry, we're not playing games from preseason. Hey, we didn't miss anything. Nil-nil. Absolute shocker of a football match. Okay, so the first transfer offer for one of our players has come in here. If you're worried that we've not made any bids yet, and it's very early, it's still probably in the video, but we will do that. I'm just waiting to get scout reports back on the players. I don't want to go in and bid for players when I don't actually know how good they are. Egli Kaiser, I believe that's probably pronounced, sorry, is going to be going out on loan to Barnet down in League 2. Second simmed game of the preseason tournament then coming in we're going to be playing Wickham Wanderers who won their first game of this preseason tournament against Silkeborg and they're leading oh they've got Akin Fenwa 
Oh, that's such a meme. We've conceded to Akin Fenwa already. We've equalised, though, thanks to uh, Liam Trotter, I believe it is. Trotter equalises, and we get a second draw. We're on two points. So basically, it all comes down to this. Odenza drew, which means they're on two points, and we're on two points. The team are playing Silkeborg on one point. So if we win, we're pretty much guaranteed to go through. In fact, we are guaranteed to go through if we win. If we draw, it's out of our hands. If we lose, we're out, basically. We've got the uh, the same starting 11 out. I haven't done any I haven't done any changing whatsoever, and it's working so far, because after two minutes, Lyle Taylor grabs our second overall goal. Lyle Taylor's doubled his tally and doubled our lead. That should put us in a pretty comfortable position now. Uh, we didn't keep a clean sheet, but we did win the game 3-1 in the end, and Lyle Taylor grabbed a hat-trick, and we're through to the knockout stage of the pre-season tournament. Old Egli Kaiser has decided he doesn't want to go to Barnett. All right, sound, mate. Well, you're not going to be getting any game time here, so I don't know why you're not going there. Anyway, we've earned a solid 300k there for the first round of that competition. If we go through into the final, I think we'll get another 600k, so... This is really important, I'm not gonna lie. The next game is still very important to really rack up those funds as we start looking for players. Speaking of which, we're gonna try and make our first signing of this series uh, just overall, just generally. It is only gonna be a loan signing if it comes off. Uh, we're gonna try and go in for Callum hudson Adoy from Chelsea. You can play as an attacking mid and on both wings and he's tearing it up in real life. He's got a ridiculous record of like 10 goals and eight assists in his like last six games under 21 level. Oh man, we're mixing it with the big with the big guns already. Antonio Conte, he's driven down to South London to uh, to start negotiations. He, he doesn't know what's going on. He's, he's in some random little terrible building in comparison to Chelsea's negotiation centre. Should we try a two-year loan actually? That would be quite because I hate one-year loans are quite difficult because if you bring everyone in on a one-year loan you end up at the end of the season and the squad's decimated again. So, so Conte's happy for a two-year loan. We think a 60-40 is a fair split for both clubs. Let's just count to 50-50 because I don't think he's going to storm out of the room if we say 50-50. Conte is a sound geezer. He probably doesn't really care about this transfer very often very much that's probably why okay it says there that it's up to Callum and his agent now to agree the loan move why I don't understand he's like I can't remember what rating he is I think he's like 66 rated that's like the prime rating to be in league one why does he think he's too good for league one now one thing I really want to do in this series is optimize youth academies because they are going to come in very handy realistically as this series progresses we're going to need that constant influx of youth academy and young players players coming into the side to provide depth. So we are going to be using Youth Academy quite regularly. We've got this guy here, Liam Kelly, who's worth 88k. I'd prefer two star, three star, but we haven't got any of those at the moment. So this will have to do for now. We are going to look at a winger because I think a, a left midfielder is more important, but we can always bring in a right mid who can then play on the left. We've got quite a few options. I know this man should be available here, Leonardo da Silva Lopez. I'm hoping that one of Maitland Niles and Reese Nelson is as well, either for sale or at least on loan. But let's make a bid then for the Portuguese winger from Peterborough, Leonardo da Silva Lopez. He's very young and he's 67 rated. Let's not forget, we've also got quite a lot of money at the moment. Let's go for 1.4 million pounds. I'd be surprised if that's his current value and they were to go anywhere lower than that. Usually 1.4 is the absolute minimum uh, whatever his current value is is the absolute minimum so let's submit that as an offer and mixed emotions i'm happy that that didn't take up much time and therefore didn't take up much time in the video however slightly concerned that i've been shortchanged because it's always a worry that you could have spent less money one other man we're going to try and approach to buy now is this man here as well ainsley maitland niles so again we're mixing it with the big guns we met antonio conte earlier now we're, we're meeting arsene wenger he has oh he's got the poshest name in football hasn't he realistically ainsley Maitland Niles. Phenomenal, isn't it? Anyway, we're going to offer a transfer fee. This time we're going to be a bit more conservative. We're going to go for 1.2. They want 1.4 mil and then a 4% tran... That makes no sense. Ugh, you know what, Arson? Just honestly, just have my money. Just 1.35 million pounds is the bid. 8% salon clause as well, which is a very odd number. Me and Arson Wenger, we're, we're best pals now. There we go. We go way back, trust me. We're meeting back up with Wenger again. I know. We could have just done this at the same time as we did the Mainsley Night. The 
Mainsley, it's, it's just not his name. We could have done this at the same time as we bridged for Ainsley, Maitland, Niles, but instead we made Arsene Wenger go back to North London to have to travel back to South London again in order to now talk about Reese Nelson, another promising winger from Arsenal. We're going to offer a transfer fee, but we don't know how much his current value is. Uh, we're going to go in with a tentative 1.1 mil, I think, and Arsene Wenger is happy with that. Originally, I said in this preseason tournament, I was only going to play the final. Yeah, we're going to play the semis, because why not? I'm not going to lie. I'm going to try and get you guys as much of an action-packed first episode as possible. Hi, right, exciting times. We're at Town Park. Oh, we're not getting a chance to play at Plough Lane, unfortunately. If we win this, I think we get like 400 or 500k, so it's an important game as far as budgeting is concerned. So this is also going to be a bit of a chance to like assess our position, because I feel like this is a team that's going to be probably as good as the top teams in our league, and it also gives me a chance to like assess the strengths and weaknesses of this side, like who are the strong links, who are the weak links in this team. I've never used them properly, I've never used them in an actual game before. Also gonna have to learn how on earth I'm gonna defend with three at the back. Not sure I've ever played a game of FIFA with three at the back. So far it seems like the build-up play of this team is very slow, I don't think there's a huge amount of pace in this team. Lyle Taylor though there for support, who is a very good striker in fairness, he's gonna go for a shot, and that is the first shot that we see of the series, dragged wide though unfortunately, by our main marksman. Barcham was brought down, now it's Trotter again. Parrot, Barcham, now into Liam Trotter, and it's wide. That was a really, really good chance, actually. He was in, he was in a really decent amount of space in the area, but I think, I'm gonna assume that's his weak foot. I'm gonna hope it's his weak foot. I love to play out from the back, so we are gonna have to try and find players that can remotely do that. So far, what I've noticed is that our defense is very strong on the ground, on the air, in, in the air, sorry, not so much. And not so much, at, like, at all. Like, that I haven't seen them win an aerial challenge yet. Is Adi Deji gonna do it? Well, he put him off, but he didn't actually win it, so... But we probably need some pacey wingers, to be honest, or just pacey players generally. That's a lovely ball through there to Harry Forrester! And that is 1-0, whilst I'm talking about the characteristics of the team. We've taken the lead, and it's our main man in terms of overall rating. Harry Forrester with the goal. Really nice finish down into the bottom corner. Set up by Quezzi Apaya. Really, really nice. It'll just, uh, just round the corner ball through. And the first time shot from Harry Forrester finds the bottom corner. And we are 1-0 up. I'm going to love this series. We're all going to love this series. I can already tell. Quezzi Apaya seemingly is our, he's our playmaker and he's a striker. I'm liking him so far, actually. All right, once again, that was really poor in the air from Florence Nightingale. Poor on the ground there as well. Good save from Long. Defensively, hmm, not sure as of yet. Charles is slow. That is one thing. Florence Nightingale, I haven't seen any positives from him as of yet. That's into the box. Thankfully, the header is straight into the hands of Long. I think we're just going to calm this one down, slow it down, because we're right on the edge of half-time. Oh, Abdu. What is that, my laddie, Jim? What are you doing, son? Oh, nice challenge from the goal scorer Forrester there to slow down the attack. And then almost intercepts the pass and then wins it back. Yep, he's definitely the man of the match so far. Doing a very good job is Forrester. Lyle Taylor coming back trying to do some defensive work. That's into the very dangerous area on the turn. Long saves though just about. He'll actually go out for a goal kick as well. That was very, very dangerous indeed. Far too much space in the area for the Hobro attacker. Just eight minutes to go now and we are still in the lead. We're going to try and put this into the box towards the penalty spot. It's cleared away just about, but only as far here as Dean Parrott, who swings it to the back post for Cody McDonald, but it ends up going backwards. He looks as if he had a free header there for a second. We need to try and win this back here. Good ball in. Oh, it hits the post. How lucky are we? My word, let's get this away for the love of God, people. Dean Parrott there with a great interception, but then loses it on the edge of the area. It's blocked by Frankham. Still, how have we still not got the ball away? In the last minute of the game, in injury time, they've scored. We had it coming, to be honest with you. They should have scored when they hit the post. Just couldn't get the ball away so many times. We could have dealt with that. Dif oh. Not looking forward to this, not going to lie, but it's anti-pass against George Long. Anti-pass was definitely their best player. 
But he's had his penalty saved by George Long. Wimbledon made it to the Football League in a penalty shootout. Oh, but we've missed there with Dean Parrott. And now it is back to square one once again. We're going to go right, but it's down the middle. Cody McDonald is now going to go to the left. But it's just tucked into the bottom corner. How on earth that has crept in? I am not entirely sure. We're going to go to the left here, but it goes to the right. And George Long is sent the wrong way. It's time for our third penalty now. It's going to be Quezzy Apaya that takes it. I'm going to blast it sort of down the middle here. That might be a little bit too much on that. It's just crept under the bar, though, and it's 2-2 still. And this is our chance to try and win it. And it's down the middle there from Mickelson. And now this is a must-score penalty. It's literally sudden death now. It's Frankham. Is it George Frankham? Not entirely sure. And it is going to be down to him to try and keep this alive. He's going to go to the left, and thankfully it goes in. The keeper stays down the middle. George Long, please, just end it. We've had 10 scored penalties in a row, and that... What was that? That is the worst penalty I've seen in my entire life. And it comes down to Tom Soares. I think it's Tom... I need to learn the first name of these players. I know them all by surname. But it's going to come down to Soares to try and win it for us. And it's saved. Are you serious? And now it's the goalkeeper. We've been going for so long that the goalkeeper is taking it. Saved by George Long. We haven't seen a penalty go in for five attempts in a row. It's going to come down to Florence Nightingale of all people. Florence, for the love of God, please. Oh, it's straight down the middle. Oh, bro, we're going to go again. It's going to go to the right. <laughs> Saved by George Long again. My word. We've had 11 scored penalties in a row. And now we've had six. As everybody's taken a penalty. George Long has saved three. And now he's going to try and score one himself. It's George Long. It's saved again. This is ridiculous. And now it's down to Adedeji Oshelaja to try and keep us in this. This is going to have to be a wonderful penalty, Adedeji. I'm sorry, mate. And it is. It's a good penalty. Finally, we score. And we're back. We're back round. Antipas is taking another one. It's 6-6. George Long has saved. He dedicated early to the left-hand side. Dean Parrott, please end it for us. It's saved again. Are you actually serious? Oh, uh, Hobro has scored. And now it's down to us to score. I almost want to lose at this point. This is getting out of hand. Cody McDonald is still injured. He still hasn't received treatment because this is the longest penalty shootout of all time. Cody McDonald to the right-hand side and it's saved again. It's this silver kid had probably saved about nine penalties in that shootout. But unfortunately for us, it results in a loss. The longest penalty shootout you'll ever see on YouTube ends in us losing. Of course it does. So in the end, it ends 7-6 on penalties to Hobro. Still don't know where they're from. Harry Forrester was your man of the match, though. We are out of the pre-season tournament. We have still earned £440,000 for getting to the semis. We're going to try desperately and actually make a signing in this episode because I'm getting fed up now. We're just getting rejected by everybody. We're going to go for a one-year loan length for Andre Dozel of Ipswich Town. I think this will be quite a cool signing if we can pull it off. They want us to pay 80% of the wages. Not really that keen on that, so I'm going to hold skip and I'm going to counter and we're going to say 65 on that one and we're going to advance, see what they say about that yeah they're happy to split it 65 35 so now it's down to Andrew Dozel to see whether he wants to drop down into League One for the season. Now this is the point at which this episode is going to come down to you guys because in the top right of the screen there's going to be a poll to let you guys decide which winger I should be buying for this Wimbledon save. We've got a choice of three, two Arsenal players and a Peterborough United player as well. Ainsley Maitland-Niles here, the right mid who can also play as a centre mid and a left back here. 24k in wages. Uh, I can't remember what the transfer bid was actually for some reason it's not telling me oh there we go um it was 1.35 mil for Ainsley Maitland Nile not a ridiculously high transfer bit fee but a lot in terms of wages again though his potential is very high we've also got Leonardo da Silva Lopez 67 rated winger I think out of the lot he's actually the best in terms of overall 
Handy's the cheapest in terms of wages, but he costs 1.4 million pounds. Very good option when you think about that. You know, his wages are very low, but he's also the best rated. Also got Reese Nelson, who's kind of in the middle. His wages are quite low, only 11.5k. And he's also the cheapest, but then I think he's also the worst in terms of overall by like one in comparison to Maitland Niles. I think he's 64 rated, so it all has loads of different variables for this one, but it's all going to come down to you guys. You are going to be deciding my first permanent signing of this Wimbledon career mode save. And whoever wins the poll on the top right of the screen will be the player that we bring in. I promise you'll be seeing more transfer activity as well. I think we've been quite unlucky, to be honest with you. I wanted to bring, it, bring in quite a few players on loan. Hasn't really happened, but I do want to bring in Andre Dorzel on loan. That will probably be the first thing we do next episode. So, again, you'll be seeing more transfer activity. We'll bring him in, and we'll bring in whoever wins this winger vote. I think that is going to be the end of today's video. We'll be starting the actual league season and bringing in at least two players next time, if not potentially three in the next episode of the Wimbledon Road to Glory. That is so cool to say. Hope you've enjoyed this first episode, though. If you have, slap a like on it. Subscribe if you are new to the channel, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. Leave me suggestions as well for players to sign down in the comments section below and if you've got any other feedback on the series then please feel free to drop it down in the comments section as well. You can follow me on social media these days. My Twitter handle is at the official FNG. Links to that are down below and my Instagram handle is exactly the same at the official FNG over there and once again links are down in the description but it has been an absolute pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. Yo, my suppose. I roll out with some monsters. Looks like your team and you watches. I do no roll with imposters. Tap like the man in the Oscars. I'm drunk of Henry and Foster's. I have a career, I am jobless. This bitch f me so hard. I might just end up unconscious. I like girls in lingerie, especially if it is crushes. Bitch, I am the bigger picture. There is no way you can crop us.